Hi everyone, today we will learn about data analysis with SPSS. We will learn step by step on how to enter a questionnaire data into SPSS, how to do a basic data analysis in SPSS, and how to report the result of the analysis. This is the IBM SPSS statistic icon. When I click on this icon, the SPSS interface will appear. This is a data view window. In this window, we can key in the data for each respondent. After keying the data, we can analyze the data or we can transform the data view the data, edit the data, as well as save the data, and so on. We can draw the graph also for the data. So this is a menu bar. The second row is a two bar. The variable name will be labeling here. The first one is the first variable in the question A, and this is the second, and so on. At the left side, we see the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This number represents the respondent. For example, number 1 represents the first respondent. So this is the first respondent and these are the data for the first respondent. But before we key in the data, we need to label the variables name. So therefore, we will click the button variable view to label the variables detail. So we click the button. After we click the button, this is a variable view window. In this variable view window, we have 11 columns for us to label the detail of each variables from the question A. Here, I will discuss about the main and important column that we need to label for each variable. The name column is for labeling the name of a variable. The name must be a single word. So we cannot type two words. It must be a single word. Less than 65 characters start with alphabet, example motivation. Start with the M. Eh? Cannot start with number or symbol. For example, one motivation, percentage motivation are not allowed. The second column is type. Under this column, we can choose type of data. Either it is a number, a word, and so on. Then we move to the decimals. The decimal column is for us to inform the number of decimal points for a variable. For example, 98.5 has one decimal, so we can choose number of decimal for the variable. The label column is for entering the real name or the full name of the variable, for example, intrinsic motivation. It means we can enter more than one word for the label. The next is the value column. The value column is one of the most important column that we need to label for categorical data. For example, for variable gender, we will label 1 equal to male and 2 equal to female. We label the value 1 and 2 for male and female so that the computer will know when we key in 1, it is a male and we key in 2, it is a female. Then, another important column is measure. The measure column is to choose the measurement scale for a variable, whether it is a nominal, ordinal, or scale data. These are the six 
important column that we need to label for each variable in a questionnaire. The other five columns, which meeting columns align and row, are optional. Now we understand briefly about the data view and variable view. We are going to enter the data into the FTS set, but we need a questionnaire. This is an example questionnaire that I have designed for the purpose of entering the data into the FTS set. This questionnaire has four sections. Section A is demographic detail that has three items. Section B, emotional intelligence, has five items with like skill. Label as one equal to strongly disagree, two equal to disagree, three undecided, four agree, and five strongly agree. Then section C, word motivation also have five like skill items. So these are the five statements. Then finally, section D, final semester score have two items. The item are mathematics score and chemistry score. The ID is the respondent number. So ID one means this is the questionnaire of the respondent one. The T and the circles, as well as the numbers, are the responses of the respondent. In FPSS, each item is a variable. Therefore, in section A, we have three variables. Section B, we have five variables. Section C, we have five variables. And section D, we have two. All together, we have 15 variables in this questionnaire. Before we start entering the data from this questionnaire into FPSS, you can click the link below this video to get the questionnaire for practice step by step following this video. Subscribe this video to go to my YouTube channel for more video. Share this video so that more people will benefit from it. And if you need the FPSS software, you can click the link below this video to get a trial version or to purchase the FPSS. Now, let's start entering data from the questionnaire into the FPSS. Now, I put the questionnaire at the left side. Then I click the icon of FPSS to open the FPSS window. So in this window, you can see all the variables here, and they are all empty because we haven't keyed in any data. And the first step, we need to label the variable name or this variable gender, age, highest level of education, and so on into the SPSS. So we click the variable view. Click the variable view. And it's turned into name, the name column, the type column, and so on. So this name column is actually for us to name all those variables in the questionnaire. So the first one is gender. Gender, so we type gender. The second is age, we type age. For the third one, highest level of education. So the name is just for one word. So we cannot type all the words here into this column. So what we do is we just uh, use one word. So I will use the word education to represent a highest level of education. Okay, then for the fourth variable, we look at section B in the questionnaire, emotional intelligence. So I will use EQ to represent emotional intelligence. I type here EQ1, EQ2, EQ3, EQ4, and 
EQ five. After this, we look at section C. Section C, word motivation have five item. So we use the word motivation one, motivation two, until motivation five to represent the five items. So we type motivation one. We can copy the word. Right click, copy, and we paste it. Then just type the two. Click again, right click, paste. Then type three. Right click, paste, type four. Right click again, paste, type five. Okay, now we go to the section D. So section D, final semester score. So we have two variables, mathematics score and chemistry score. So for mathematics score, we use the word mathematics. So we type here, mathematics. And for chemistry, we type the word chemistry. This is what we learned about the name column. Type only one word for each variable. Do not start with number examples, one gender, two age. Do not start with symbol example, percentage gender, dollar age, head deck, education and EQ and so on. Now, after naming the variable in the name column, we move to the type column where we will indicate type of data for each variable. In this question A, section A, demographic detail, we have three categorical items, gender, age, and highest level of education. All the three categorical items use number to represent their category. For example, gender. Gender use number one to represent male, and two for female, and so on. For section B and section C, emotional intelligence and word motivation, all the 10 items are in Likert skill, in Likert skill. These Likert skills use the number one to five, one to five to represent the five responses. So these items are also numerical item. Section D, final semester score, the two items use number as well to represent uh, the score of the respondent. So therefore, all of the 15 variables in this question A are numerical item. When we click the box in the type column, the variable type box will appear where we can select any type of data type for our data. So in this case, we will select numeric. But if our data is in uh, date or dollar as well as others, then we can select one of it. For string, string is for the data in word. So if we have the data in word, like if let's say, the gender we want to type male or we want to type female in terms of one and two, then we will select string. But in this case, we are not going to type the male or female because when data analysis, we will use the number in calculation. So therefore, we select the name. In this case, all the 15 variables we will continue without changing their data type. The next step is to label the variable with their full terms. So in this label column, we can move this label column to the right side of the name column so that they are together, we can see each other clearly. 
To label the variable, we refer to the name of the variables. So, the first is gender. The second is age. Then, for the third, it is highest level of education. So, we have that highest level of education. Okay, so we can see the full term of the variables. You can type as many words as you can. Okay, so for the section B, we have five items in the table. So, in this case, we highlight all the five item statement, then we copy, right click and copy. Then we go back to the SPSS window, select all of the five variables, then right click and click the page to paste them inside the box, inside the variable box. Okay, so now we have labeled all of the five variables. So for the section C, we use the same method. All right, uh, highlight all of the variables statement, then right click and copy. Then we highlight all the variables. Huh? We highlight all the five item. And then we just click paste to paste them. So now we have label the 10 uh, related skills uh, in section E and section C. We move to the section D, where mathematics and chemistry, their label are full term mathematics score. So we just click, right click, and copy. We can type, but in this case, we can also copy. Click the chemistry score, then copy, right click, and also right click and paste again. So now we have label all the variables with their full terms, full name. These are the tips for labeling the label column. Type the full name or statement for each variable. If the statement is long, we can copy the statement from the Microsoft Word or Excel document, then paste it into the label column. The label will appear in the result of the data analysis in table of figures. Therefore, labeling the full term is important. Without labeling the variables, the output of data analysis will present the name of the variables. Okay, then we move to the another important column, which is the decimal. 